So in this video, we would like to look at a special property. You can call it an application of diagonalizable matrices. For example, if you're trying to determine whether two matrices are similar to each other, and we have seen it in a previous video already, the two matrices must have the same characteristic polynomial and they must have the same determinant, right? But the opposite side may not be correct, which means if both matrices have the same determinant and the same characteristic polynomial, it does not automatically imply that they are similar to each other. And now uh, we look into such a problem in a deeper way in this problem based on our knowledge of the diagonalizable matrices. Now I claim that if both matrices have the same set of eigenvalues, it essentially means they have the same characteristic polynomial and if both are diagonalizable. So if you recall from our previous video, you'd understand that, for example, if M1 is diagonalizable, it is actually similar to a diagonal matrix, which has the eigenvalues of M1 as the diagonal, right? If you recall, that, it would be great. And similarly, for the M2, it is also similar to a diagonal matrix, which has the eigenvalues of M2 as the diagonal now. And please look at this assumption. We are assuming that both matrices have the same set of eigenvalues. So it means that uh, these two diagonal matrices are basically the same, right? And by definition of similarity, it means um, there should be a matrix P1 such that when we multiply the matrices like this, we'll get um, the first matrix equation. And the same thing happens similarly for the second matrix equation, right? And it would be great if you recall how we form the P1 um, like a matrix equation like this, the P1 is formed by first finding all the eigenvectors of the matrix M1. And you just have to list the eigenvectors as a column in P1. And automatically you will get such a matrix equation. And similarly for the second one. So what does it mean? If you combine the two equations now, you'd get such a matrix equation now, right? And we just have to focus on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So are you able to do some transformation up here? So for example, I can multiply to the left-hand side on both ends by the matrix P1. The way I do it is because I want to um, cancel out this, because now it is in identity and it means it is canceled out and the left-hand side is left with this, right? And I can also multiply to the right-hand side of this matrix product by P1 inverse. So can you see what's happening if I multiply it like this? So you're getting a matrix like this. And now please look at the left-hand side is it's quite clear. Now the left-hand side is basically uh, just one matrix now. And how about the right-hand side? Um, so I hope you can recall some facts. The fact is that if you have a matrix like this, if you take the inverse, it is actually the same as P1 times P2 inverse. If you recall such a formula for the inverse property, it would be great. We have talked about such a property quite a long time ago, and by applying this, we can get this. So what does it mean? I can write the right-hand side this way, right? And you can think of this matrix as Q now. So basically it means M1 is the same as Q inverse times M2 times Q, right? And it means what? It basically means now M1 is similar to M2, right? So what does it mean? Um, let's go back up. Basically uh, it's exactly what I said up here. It basically means if both matrices have the same set of eigenvalues, so that's why the diagonal matrix D is the same among the two equations. And if they are diagonalizable, it means you're actually able to form such a matrix equation. We already showed that uh, in that case, M1 must be similar to M2, right? And let's look at some examples now. Let's look at the given two matrices AB now. Um, are they similar to each other? And let's find the eigenvalues of both cases first. For the first matrix, the only eigenvalue is 2, and it is repeated because it is a uh, upper triangular case, we, we can just pick the diagonal entry as the eigenvalue, and similar thing happens to B. It has only one eigenvalue also, right? And now, and let's look at the number of eigenvectors each one has, because uh, please recall from the last video, for the matrices AB to be diagonalizable, we need them to have two linearly independent eigenvector. In that case, the dimension of the eigenspace is going to be 2. And that's the criterion for us to get a diagonalizable matrix A and B. And let's look at B first. You see, uh, B minus 2i is going to be its matrix. And theoretically, you have to solve uh, such a homogeneous linear system. And you can 
you can get some help based on your knowledge on the rank nullity formula, right? You see this matrix has rank one because of the fact that um, the row space actually has dimension one because we have only one row and the second row is zero. And by the rank nullity formula, we understand the rank plus nullity is gonna be one. And in this case, because the rank is one, it means nullity is one. Nullity is one means you get only one eigenvector, right? So it means uh, in this case for B, B has only one eigenvector um, for the whole thing. So it essentially means the dimension of the eigenspace of B is going to be only one. So uh, it means B is actually not diagonalizable. And actually A is more clear for, for, because for example now, if you write this matrix down, it's going to be the zero matrix. And theoretically you have to solve for this homogeneous linear system. And because this matrix has rank zero, right? And if you look at the rank nullity formula, it basically means the nullity must be two now. Nullity two means you actually have two linearly independent eigenvector. So it gives us a sense that the eigenspace of matrix A is actually two. And this fact implies that uh, A is diagonalizable, but because B is not, so it basically means A is not similar to the matrix B. And that's a way to show they are not similar. And let's look at one more example. And please look at the current matrices A, B here. Uh, I would like to ask the same questions, whether A is similar to B. And I think B is easier to deal with because we can think of it as a special case of upper triangular matrix. It means I can read off the eigenvalues based on the diagonal. So um, there are basically three different eigenvalues, right? So it means that automatically, whenever you have three different eigenvalues, we understand that uh, we must have three linearly independent eigenvectors, one for each distinct eigenvalue. It means automatically I can write the fact that dimension of the eigenspace of B is going to be three. And this fact is good enough for us to claim that uh, B is actually a diagonalizable matrix. And actually this case is quite clear in the sense that because B itself is diagonal, and you can see D is usually formed by the uh, diagonal matrix, which has the eigenvalues on the diagonal, right? Basically, D is the same as B, I think. So basically, something like that, right? Because I'm just putting the eigenvalues back in. Of, of course, it's the same as B. And let's look at A. So uh, you have to resolve the eigenvalues now, and which means we have to look at such a determinant equation now. And please do the computation yourself. So you see, you have to apply the determinant formula for the three by three matrix here. And luckily we have many zeros, like for example, I can use the cofactor expansion along the first row. When I notice there are two zeros on the first row, it means I think um, the determinant equation would give us a polynomial in degree three on the left-hand side, something like that. So you see, uh, it basically means uh, the matrix A also has three distinct eigenvalues. And these are the same as the eigenvalues in the matrix B, right? That's the first condition we want for A and B to be similar. And the second condition is that because A is of size three by three and it has three distinct eigenvalues, automatically it implies that the dimension of the eigenspace of A is gonna be three. And this fact implies that A is actually similar to the diagonal matrix D, which is uh, obtained by just listing the eigenvalues on the diagonal, right? So um, Based on my hints before, because of the fact that B is similar to D and A is also similar to D, and the fact is that it essentially means A is similar to B, based on the equation star and equation double star here. And it means the answer to this problem is yes. And that's the end of this video.